Hey Darcy, just wanted to touch base with you. So um, here is my aquaponic system that is the decoupled system. So what these are is it's a system that is separated the aquaponics from the hydroponics. And so you can see the fish are pretty big. Uh, they're all wanting to come up and eat. So let me throw them a little bit of food here. Throw that little piranhas. Anyways, give them a little snack, bring them up to the top so you can kind of see. They're probably three quarters to a pound each. Anyways, um, so there's the standpipe that I was talking about for the stepper bit. Uh, the same bit was used to drill all those holes that are in the top of that pipe. And the way that I designed this is um, when I bought this tank, it already had a hole in the bottom. So I had to go with this standpipe. So the way I did it was is I set it up to where this, it's like a skimmer. See that poop going over? And so what ends up happening is, is uh, this will skim the top and it'll take all the impurities off. And then the, uh, there's holes down on the bottom, just a few holes in that center pipe on the bottom, about six, eight. And then I have a sheath over the top that has little slits like the ones that you showed. And that gives me just enough back pressure. So notice how that water drops down lower than the water that's up here. That means there's a suction. So that means everything on the bottom is getting drained out. That's why the water is so clear. So anyways, um, that's the kind of the way I had to design it. Um, for this system and anyways um, this is a pump configuration so I'll just go through it really quick so the water goes down the drain and all the solids comes into this joint and then it comes into this recirculating pump right here it's just a tiny mite pump and uh, then that gets pumped up into this chamber now this chamber right here has biomedia and so the well, bead media so what ends up happening is is the poop will try to go through this and it'll get stuck and the only thing that comes out is the clear water. Now, what happens is, is we have a little pump right here. This pump slowly adds water, or I'm sorry, air, to this tank, and it slowly pushes the pressure down. And then there's a, I don't know why the dogs are barking. This, this J tube right here, you can see this tube right here. What ends up happening is, is once that bubble goes down into this sight tube right here, It'll, it'll end up uh, vapor locking and puts a big old bubble charge into this media and it shakes all those beads and then all that poop that in uneaten food gets discharged into this little uh, little chamber down here and then it goes into this and it splashes up over and it gets settled into here. So when that water when that water comes back up, it comes into a UV sterilizer just to keep them from getting ick and stuff like that and then it comes back in here and then it gets discharged back into this and so um, now this is a uh, do-it-yourself uh, venturi that I made basically it's just a hose um, there's a video in my uh, on my page there that will show you how to build that um, with just a little bit of plastic tubing Anyways, it's not bubbling right now because we have, uh, right now we, I turned this off. Let me turn it on for a split second. It gets noisy with this regenerative blower, but you'll see how fast it, it what, the difference. So you can see that Venturi, it's sucking that air and it's creating more bubbles. Now, even though we got plenty of bubbles with the other aeration, that's, you know, that's where it is. Uh, so now, what happens with all the poop? So what ends up happening is, is there's a valve back here. You turn this valve on. In fact, I can give you a run for it real quick. You can see how pretty and clear that water is. And watch this. So you want to keep that going until it clears out. Boom. See that's clear now? So that means that uh, we got the, it naturally uh, sets it up. Now because it's a clear pipe, I like to keep it covered. 
So this is uh, this is the uh, mineralization tank. It's a military pepper jar. So what I did was I just retrofitted that um, that uh, deal in there, that valve. That goes into the middle and it goes straight down with a whole, uh, with a pipe, and it it'll actually just suck the the fish shit right out. There you go. So that's highly concentrated fish manure. Okay. And so uh, I have uh, two from the aeration. I have two aeration stones. This aerobically breaks down the uh, the deposits that's in there. And by aerobically breaking it down, it increases the digestibility of the and the uh, mineralization of the uh, the tank by 60%. And so, you can kind of see, it just kind of tees off of that bag. This is, this is, the, this unit right here is what, sorry about the camera work here, I need both hands really. Um, so I don't know if you see it or not, but uh, this tank right here is the difference between uh, decoupled and coupled system. By adding this extra tank, um, it allows you to uh, break down the mineralization of the um, the settable solids, and that increases the vitamin and, and the nutrient content by 60%. And that just gravity flows through wall, and then it goes into the sump. Now this sump is another IBC tote. And so, this is my IBC tote. So I've got a 8-inch uh, uh, um, stone uh, aeration unit. I have the pump down there, and then uh, this is the return line. So this water, the, the it comes in. You can see it feeding right there off that one pipe. This that's the only thing that comes in here is nutrients and water. This water never returns back to the uh, the fish, and so all I have to do is top the uh, the water off on the fish. Like I'll add probably a gallon and a half, two gallons, uh, just to top that off a little bit because we just uh, opened that up. But anyways, and so that goes up, pumps in there. There's two lines there. The top line's the air, and then the bottom line is the water. Um, this was my drain. So the way that I design these is they come down. There's a, just a bulkhead fitting that comes down, and then it opens up, and then that pipe goes in here. And this middle pipe right here goes all the way through these because this is a 3-inch. So that pipe's standing inside, and then there's a uh, standpipe that's in here. So this whole area fills up with water, and then it spills over kind of like a Venturi system that you were talking about. That way there we get the full, uh, you can see inside what it's doing. So this is kind of like uh, the same Venturi that you're, you're trying to do with your uh, deal. So, so you can see the water, it's, uh, it's working. And then uh, put the shader back on. This heats hell on, uh, uh, this is my Dutch buckets. Those will be up and running tomorrow. My tomato plants are ready to go. But you can see, that's the DWC system right there. So these are some of my first plants. They bolted a little bit, so they're kind of weak on the base. But they're starting to grow. They're catching on. Um, these are my second groups right there. This you can see a lot better when I changed it up. Uh, that's my kale and then uh, I've got some bell peppers coming in there's my tomato plants tomato plants are going to be transferred to the other one and so that's a uh, pak choy baby pak choy and then you can see some more of that butter crunch lettuce that's growing um, some other another pac-man pak chow pak choy and then uh, another tomato plant and so that water just comes in from that pump out of the sump, comes in here, and it just goes on a recirc. So that water fills in, and and then it and it constantly uh, runs, I'm trying to steal that plant's light. There we go. But as you can see, real real simplistic system. We got two beds, we got some vertical towers, but I'm having problems with algae. Um, those are probably going to be a winter crop, so we shut those down for the, for the, until the winter. 
But um, and then like I said, I've got to finish painting the rest of my Dutch buckets. This Dutch bucket system is all raid. Uh, basically, I've got this timer. That timer's going to run the pump that's in there. I plan on putting another pickle jar over here in the corner, and it's going to gravity feed when this needs water. That way, the pump never dries out. That pump feeds spaghetti lines, and it goes all the way down that black line, and it comes into here. So your lines will be in here, and then we're just growing this stuff in perlite, and so in a, in a painter's mesh. Real, real simple, real, real clean. And then uh, when your plant, tomato plants get done, um, you just dig them up, shake all these off of there, and you could reuse that perlite. So, um, and then uh, you want your tomato plants and your pepper plants to water at 7 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. I'm going to be doing a, uh, another system with this unit here. I'll, um, I'll do some documentation on that. So anyway, so that kind of gives you an idea of the setup that I built. And uh, it was a little bit of work, but we did it. Um, and then, so just recently, what we did is we came out and uh and like i said we built this uh what are you doing coda you better not be getting into nothing so that this system here what we're going to do is just build a little addition onto this and box this in and i'll go to habitat for humanity and i'll buy a little door right there and so basically uh this is the same exact system but without that filter you're gonna need a couple of box or uh, deals. You gotta get these foxtails out of there. Excuse me. So, anyways, uh, basically we got our uh, we got all our duckweed, and those are our loofahs. And uh, basically, the water skims off the top right there, and this one comes up off the bottom of that uh, tank. Now, if you look at it, how level it is, this tank here is higher than this tank. Your sump tank, where the water comes from, has to be the lowest tank if you're doing something similar to this. I'm not exactly sure how you're doing it with that, uh, with that other guy's design, but this tank needs to be lower. So everything's gravity fed. So basically what's happening is that water's coming out of here, and then the pressure of the water being higher than that is pushing that out. And then, then you have the uh, flow over. I've got a little Harbor Freight 650 gallon per minute uh, or gallon per hour pump, and um, that rests down in there, and so keeps it real, real simple. And so, uh, and then I've got some uh, media mash. I've got blue, green, and white. And then I just took some. Uh, this is just some of that fabric you get by the roll. That can work just as good too. And so you got your loofahs in there. All different types of scrubbies, a lot of surface area that's on these, so um, it gives you a lot of extra uh, um, air, uh, nitrification. And so that water just kind of duckweed likes doesn't like to be very violent and, and uh, turbulent. So if you uh, if you have that little baffle in there, it'll slow that turbidity down to where uh, you know your uh, duckweed can grow. And this stuff's great. Uh, the the uh, fish love it, um, especially tilapia. So now once we get everything situated and set up, we're going to uh, finish up. We're going to get this tractor over here, and we're going to fill backfill this up. Now on this side, I plan on going several feet. I'll probably put it up to about um, the first uh, the first rung. Here's the top right here. I'm probably going to take dirt up to right here. So that way, we can take this one here and um and so the water the pump will feed this up with water we're going to have another air, eight inch aerated stone that's in there and then uh we're going to have the k1 media it's a sb5 i think is what it is it, i call it k5 um it's the size and so um i use a stepper bit drilled all those in there and then uh just so the media can't go through but the water can so what will happen is is that aeration of that water the pump's going to be pumping it in it's going to be aerating it and then that water is just going to free flow and waterfall back into the tank so basically um instead of the pump coming straight back into the tank it's going to come up to one other tank which is going to be the one over there that i just showed you that has the k1 media and then that's going to go back into the tank itself so and that'll be completely set up so uh you bio 
so that what this does this catches all your settable solids that's your heavy solids that go to the bottom of the tank that's what this tanks for then this tank right here that little filter right there that's for your suspended solids um, I don't know if you can see it in there but you can see some of the duckweed and some of the poop that's floating around that's what that's designed for is to catch that so that way the water that's coming in here is absolutely clear there's uh there's not going to be any uh you know duckweed or uh, foreign object or debris or anything else in there um, except for the stuff that uh, blows in but once we get the build over it um, we're not gonna have that problem so anyways and so that's that's kind of the filtration so the, that tank and this little yellow tank is what's gonna filter all the settable solids and the suspended solids and then that fresh water now at that point your fish are using it they're, they're excreting uh, ammonia from their gills and um, also there's ammonia created from the uneaten food. What you need to do is make sure that you have some kind of uh, uh, denitrification. And that's where that K5 media comes in. It's the same media that's in that green, uh, that green pump that's over there. But this stuff's a little bit bigger. And so um, I'll, I'll be able to max out my densities on this tank um, with, that other, with that K1 media. A lot of people, they don't want it because it's expensive. Now, if there's a way that you could incorporate this, this stuff right here into uh, your new system, I would definitely do it because um, you don't want to be cleaning it out every year, shoveling all that rock out of there and, uh, and cleaning it off, rinsing it, pulling the roots, and then having to put it all back together to be ready for springtime. And so I, I tend to like to work smarter, not harder. And so that's the only rebuttal that I think I saw at all that is uh, just the lack of uh, solids removal. And uh, remember, the more the solids build up, the more and more uh, problems you're going to have with ammonia spikes and all types of stuff. Now, granted, uh, tilapia are more forgiving, but uh, there's nothing more than uh, there's nothing worse in the world than coming out and your entire system shut down because your fish died. And not to mention how long it's going to take you to grow them back the way they were with size. So anyways, um, I hope this is a help for you. And um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You got my information. Anyways, uh, hopefully you have a beautiful day. I appreciate your uh, attention on it and hopefully it'll help. Anyways, take care and be blessed.